about this box for? This is this is a cast aluminum box for uh, it contains an, an MB500. MB our our board, the, our dual frequency board. the dual frequency board, um, and this is intended for base stations. It's intended for marine applications. It's intended for machine control. And it's really good for machine control because the box is solid aluminum. It's waterproof. What do you call it? IP. IP67. It's the six stands for dustproof. Dustproof. And, and the, the seven, seven is immersion between 15 centimeters and one meter for up to 30 minutes. Yeah, we took this apart the other day, and it really is bulletproof. I mean, the wall thickness is a quarter of an inch thick. Um, the neat thing about this, the battery is the same battery that's on the Promark 500. This is a standard Samsung camcorder battery. I thought it was Sony. No, it's a Samsung. You can buy these on the web for $18. This is not proprietary battery technology. The charger for it, you can almost buy these at Walmart. Mm -hmm. Charger for it, a couple hour charge. Anyways, I think that if you have this on external power, it actually charges the battery. It does, it charges okay, the good. battery. And then inside of here, there's an SD card. No, uh, SIM card. Or SIM card, you put in a uh, GSM phone card, and then this can get on the web for corrections, or to broadcast corrections. And I think that all of these come with the phone, whether you order the option or not, doesn't it? They come with the phone, but it's not enabled, right? Right. Cost right. right. eight or nine hundred bucks to turn it on. Uh, this battery fits in here. There's a couple little springs that push it out. And then when you close the battery, it's sealed. I like the fact that you don't need a coin yeah. or a screwdriver to open this up, and it is hot swappable in the field. So even if I have external power on, I can remove the battery and put another battery yeah. in. And the importance of the battery in the case of a base station is if we've got external power on this, it's going to charge the internal battery. This will run for six hours on so the internal battery. Effectively a UPS. Yeah, this build us a power supply. There's a display on the front here. I'll turn this on and we'll see it in a second. It's a pretty simple interface. There's three buttons. There's an on-off, a start and stop scoring static button, and then a page button to go through the air screens and you can get to the serial numbers. And then this is the GSM antenna. GSM antenna? This is the Bluetooth antenna. GSM telephone, cell phone. And this is Bluetooth for, for connecting to a data collector. What's this? Like? That would be USB. Yep. yep. And you can do two things with the USB. You can plug an external memory card into this, and then all of the static memory, there's 128 meg of static memory, which is enough to collect data one second with GLONASS for a month or something. Two months, so forever. Effectively forever. <laughs> Come to me later, I'll give you the real stat on that. <laughs> so uh, this has got a little plug on it, so this is waterproof. The connector is waterproof anyway. You know what so this is called, by the way? A plug. It's a bichon. Bichon. I like the words. I'm into words. I was going to say... Let's move on. Yes. Let's move on. Let's now, talk now, hold on. Let's talk about this Bluetooth. Why is it interesting that you can pull the Bluetooth off when it's not built in? Well, if you've got this in a backpack for, like, seismic survey, you can take and remove this antenna down the antenna line and put the emitter for the Bluetooth in front of your body. Because Bluetooth won't make it through your body. 90% water. 90% water. So you can take and remove that antenna down the cable trap pattern. You don't have to run it all the way to the antenna, just in front of your body, and then your data collector can still be loaded. Um, you're an electrical engineer, so do I have to worry about the length or the type yeah, of you cable? Yeah, you want that cable as short I mean, as possible. This is not a cable that Magellan provides. No. Okay. Then you right. have to go to it. Right. But it's a standard cable. Yeah, it is. Okay. I think those are standard connectors. Now, on the back here, there's a connector wow. for the radio. Look at, look at all this. This is busy. Busy. This is the radio, because it's got an internal pack press radio. And then this goes to the um, satellite. The GNSS antenna. The GNSS antenna, and it's a standard TNC connector, but it's heavy duty, and it's got these nice little waterproof caps. And then we've got a canvas connector that's optically isolated. All of the uh, connections on the back here, except for the power connector, are optically isolated. To explain to them what, what optical isolation means and how that benefits us. So if you're working on a marine application on a boat, you don't want any stray currents going from different places on the boat back or on a big piece of equipment. You don't want any stray uh, currents. So these are optically isolated. So wherever you run the wire to is not electrically connected to this box. It is, but it's optically isolated inside. So it's essentially, if you take an ohm meter, you go from these connectors to the box, It'll read infinite, so no current flows. So there's the CAN bus connector. There's and the CAN bus connector is for use in machine, like control. machine control, marine applications. I don't know. 
Okay. I don't know. I've never used one, but it's cool. It's got one. Okay, so the CAN bus is a universal uh, yeah. standard. Yeah. And it's uh, primarily used to transport the NEMA 2000 data. RS-232, we would typically use the NEMA 0183. With the CAN bus, we use the NEMA 2000 standard because it's transported in a different way that's standard on heavy equipment. Oh, it's a standard. is the CAN bus controller, then there's three serial ports, an ether port, net port, a power port. This is the port that charges the battery or runs the device. And then there's a satellite antenna and a, a radio antenna. The earth ground. Earth ground. And we notice a hole right here, a future hole, for uh, phase two of this product, which will have heading. So we'll actually put another GNSS board in there. We'll be able to run two antennas out of here and in real time be able to give heading. So we'll have a centimeter position plus heading. Plus heading and program for live hash command to do and, either. And then this one here, the next to last one, is an Ethernet connector. So you can use this for a base. It's got a web interface in it. And so it'll pump the correction back out to the Internet. So this is a freestanding GNSS receiver for use in a VRS network. Furthermore, you can remote control, remotely control the GNSS receiver via the internet connection. Right, and it's secure because it's secure at HTTP. Yes. Yes. That makes sense. And finally here, that's external power, so this will run off of external power and it charges. It.